yeah one student got out uh, but hopefully he'll connect all right so that thread didn't get recorded anyway uh, sure so let's continue from where we stop but before i go forward uh, in the last class two sessions we only talked about you know praying in the spirit so uh, i wanted to ask you if there is anything new that you learned in the last session as per the last topic so if you can share a little bit then i go into today's section yeah so prayer in the spirit anything new you learned or if um, you know the it's helping you in your prayer life could you share so that that will be an encouragement for all of us even the google, google classroom students can also please share something new that i learned was uh, that um praying the spirit helps us like um uh, stir up the gifts the other gifts so i also like want the other gifts of the spirit so uh, if i want that i have to uh, nurture this um praying in tongues and this and you know eventually yeah help the other gifts to mm. start coming up okay so then you started practicing that is it so praying the spirit stirs up the other gifts um so yeah we can engage in doing it all right great so that is rin's learning anything else that has personally uh, you know helped you about praying in the spirit new things nothing <laughs> we spent 2 hours last session Okay, you're all deeply thinking about it. Praying without boundaries. Okay. So it was, I I I didn't know that when you are praying in spirit, we are praying for somebody. Not we don't not even know, or somewhere around the world. That was a little uh, encouraging and um, exciting. Okay. Thank you so much. So praying without boundaries, where when we pray in the spirit, sometimes we could be praying for people that we don't know or matters that are not in our understanding. Uh, so Nina was sharing that that uh, was a blessing to her. So I just want to encourage all of us. Uh, praying in the spirit is a is a privilege and a blessing which God has given us. So I want to um, encourage you to use it, and you will see the benefits of it. You know, in your uh, uh, personal life. Moving on, today we will touch upon um, chapter eight in our notes, which is about developing our personal prayer life. So so far we uh, tried to understand, you know, what personal prayer life. or in general prayer life means that you know it's about building a relationship it's about uh, asking god for our needs um, you know it's about pouring out our, our hearts before god receiving his strength so we've understood many things about prayer but how do we personally strengthen you know our prayer life so what are some of the things that will help us that's what we are going to look at today Uh, so before we get into the uh, practical aspects you know of what to do to develop a strong prayer life um i want us to look at the prayer life of daniel okay so what can we say about the prayer life of daniel yes yeah question okay sure it's about the praying as word So uh it's a question that I've been thinking about and I wanted to ask. Okay. Um so you said that uh praying the spirit um like when we pray in tongues it um it uh, like we when we pray in tongues like we do not understand about uh, understand but uh, we might be praying about the future or we might be praying on behalf of someone or or uh, just personal prayer so uh, i was thinking like um if we think about our future and we pray in tongues is that same thing okay yeah very good question so um 
Yeah. So Rin's question is when we pray in the spirit, so this is going back to prayer in the spirit. So, you know, a little bit of a rewind happening here. Um, she's asking, since we don't understand what we are saying, uh, we are saying something in our uh, heavenly language, but in our minds, in our human understanding also, we are, we are thinking about the same subject. For example, I begin to pray in the spirit and I think, okay, I'm going to pray for my future. In my mind also, I'm thinking, okay, God bless me, my future, this and that, and I'm praying. So is it the same thing? Okay, will there be a connection? Will you be able to pray for the um, for the future or would you be able to pray for something else? So frankly, Rin, uh, it's hard to answer your question because when we pray in the spirit, we don't know what we're saying. So. Uh, though I, I think that I want to pray for my future and I start praying in tongues, I may or may not be praying exactly for the point that is in my mind. Okay. In some instances, it could happen. How can I know if it has happened? I've already told us there is another gift which operates. It's known as interpretation of tongues. So, not only in the public setting, but also sometimes personally when we pray, after we finish praying, by the gift of interpretation of tongues, I may know what I prayed for. You got it? So, unless that gift is operational, I cannot know what I'm praying for. So, I have a subject in my mind and I'm praying for it. It may not, may or may not be in sync with what I intend to pray in the spirit. Okay, so that's my answer. Yeah, but there are people, <coughs> I've heard, you know, uh, uh, some teachings on uh, praying in the spirit where people who have taught this subject a lot, uh, I, I know one particular person, he says that the more you pray in the spirit, you start, you may, uh, and also I've heard pastor say it, that, when you are praying in the spirit a lot, at some point, may somehow you know, maybe the other gift is operational, interpretation of tongues. You kind of know after your prayer the essence of what you were praying for. So that is possible, not because you understood the tongues, but because of the other gift, which is interpretation of tongues. Okay. Does it help? Okay, great. All right. Okay, so uh, here in the chat, um, Nina also adds something to praying in the spirit. She says it builds up the inner man in a way that nothing else. Then, um, as was the practice. Okay, so the, she's answering the next question that I asked. So I asked uh, about Daniel, and I said, okay, tell me something about Daniel's prayer life. So uh, she is saying that uh, he had a wonderful habit. He always attributed all the gifts and interpretation of things to God. So he uh, thanked God, he acknowledged God. Okay, so that is something about Daniel. But what about Daniel's prayer life? What do you know about Daniel's prayer life? Yes, so he used to pray every day three times. Okay, so he would look in the direction of the temple and he would uh, pray thrice a day. So we have a passage in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. Um, it says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. So what Daniel did in this situation is one thing. He prayed three times a day, but the most important part at least, you know, because we are talking about prayer, the important part for us right now is the last bit, where it says, as was his custom since early days. So what does that tell us? It tells us that Daniel, he was in a difficult situation. Okay, so we know that, uh, um, you know, uh, he, he 
he there was a decree and you're supposed to only uh, worship the the king at that time uh, but daniel had a regular practice so it says as was his custom since early days so he was just doing what he was always doing his entire life so you know these are all habits so when we wake up in the morning and maybe we read the bible it becomes a habit okay so have some if i do it one day and then i don't do it on another day i don't call it a habit but if i do it repeatedly every day that's a habit so from this particular verse what we understand is as was his custom since early days tells us that daniel had a prayer habit from early days okay so he believed in god and that was his standard if you wanted to go and find out where daniel was in those three Uh, for the jews they had three particular times in the day right when they would pray so you would go find him praying so it was a habit it was a practice in daniel's life as we look at first corinthians 9 okay um verse 20 okay 24 to 27 can somebody please read it first corinthians 9 verse verses 24 to 27 Okay, Ashram. Sorry to interrupt you. Could you please speak into the mic? Surely you know. Surely you know that many runners take partner race, but only one of them wins the prize. Run then in such a way as to win the prize. Every athlete in training submits to strict discipline in order to be crowned with a breath that will not last. But we do it for one that will last forever. That is why I run straight for the finishing line. that is why i am like a boxer who does not waste his punches i harden my body with blows and bring it under complete control to keep myself from being disqualified after having called others to the contest hmm. okay thank you so paul is giving us an example of an athlete an athlete has a goal okay and that goal is to win the prize so how do they maintain you know their their uh, um daily routine they're quite disciplined they're quite strict okay how many sports people here okay there are a couple of sports people okay all of you sports people so you know that uh, you know discipline and maintaining your physical health is so important right if you have to compete in any um, sports event now discipline what does discipline mean discipline means um closely controlled or regimented so let's say that there is an event coming up okay and uh, one of you being an athlete you have to run 400 meters and the event is 2 weeks away would you or would you not be strict about your diet your sleep your practice sessions you would right you would really be strict about all those things now that's what paul is saying he's saying as believers we have a goal in christ jesus and the people who want to win the goal will not just live however they like okay so an athlete who has to run the race he has a goal in mind he is going to be careful you know about in this case physical health and so we understand discipline in that sense now as believers it's not just about our physical body it's about our soul right soul which has to do with our will our emotions our um, you know mind our spirit now we must be strictly regimented controlled you know as far as uh, all our faculties are concerned now when we look at something like prayer in our lives okay uh, that also needs to be part of the discipline that we maintain so if we don't have prayer as a discipline and we just pray you know here and there i pray that's not a discipline that's not a habit 
okay, in our lives. So that's what we see here in what we read from 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27. Paul is saying that when we are in Christ and we are you know, living for the purpose of God for our lives, we have to be disciplined. And by discipline, I'm not talking about you know, human works, like do all these works and you will earn God's grace. That's not the point. But it's more about regulating yourself in a temperate way. No extremes. Okay? No extremes. So prayer is very much a part of this temperate lifestyle. When I'm running heavenward, prayer is a part of the discipline when I am uh, moving towards the goal that God has for me. So I must be able, every believer and especially leaders must be able to self-govern. Self-govern means discipline, self-discipline. Like, you know, uh, the flesh should not have control over us, but we should be able to tell ourselves, okay, now is the time to pray. I will pray. Now is the time to spend in the word. I will spend time in the word. Now is the time to worship. Or, you know, sometimes what happens, we come for all the supernatural hour, we are worshiping God. Uh, we feel like we don't have the capacity, isn't it? It feels too long. Why is it taking one hour? Like if it was 10 minutes, okay, I can handle it. But one hour I cannot handle. So what's happening? We are stretching ourselves. Okay, we are learning to self-regulate in these matters, you know, which are so important for our Christian faith, especially prayer, especially prayer. So we must have the discipline of prayer. So when I say discipline, in a way you can think of, okay, it's controlled, it's planned, it's scheduled into my uh, life. Okay, uh, now... When we talk about um, having a prayer schedule, um, having a prayer habit, people have many responses. Some say that, okay, you know, because now we are under grace, why should I have a schedule? I will just let the Holy Spirit lead me. What do you think about that? No, no need discipline and all. Whenever Holy Spirit leads, I will pray. And when he doesn't lead, I will do something else. What do you feel about that? Sounds good. So it doesn't sound good. So if it doesn't sound good, why doesn't it sound good? As the spirit leads. Okay, sure. So Vimal's answer is like we need food every day. We need um prayer every day okay so okay makes complete sense we never say i will eat when the holy spirit leads me anybody here we never say that so in a sense you're right because our relationship with god is so important for us and you know it's it's the place from where we receive that strength uh, it's like food and therefore uh, it must be part of a discipline and habit okay great so you see, these are all the excuses which we have. We say that Holy Spirit will lead me, so I will not plan for it. See, whenever we have something important, if we have an exam, do you have study times? Do you plan it? We always plan it because it's important. It's only when we don't consider something important that we don't make time for it. Okay, so prayer is that important. We must make time for it. Okay, then some people have this uh, statement. They say, I don't need a planned time in a day. As I'm going through the day, I will pray. You know, as I'm doing my work, I will pray. As I'm walking, I will pray. So what do you think about that? Sounds, sounds nice. Okay, not giving importance to God. Okay. You see, as you consider our daily routines, anything happens, right? You plan to go do something and somebody calls you. You have to go there. Somebody calls you. It's a very important call. You have to spend time. So your time gets sucked up. If you don't plan that I need to do this, everything else will take away. 
you know your time so though we say that as i go through the day i will pray it may never happen unless we plan for it now there are people who also might say oh prayer prayer is a waste of time you know sitting and doing nothing for one hour just forget it you know you should work if you work god helps those who help themselves which bible verse is that it's not in the bible okay <laughs> so uh, it is we we don't say that you should not work definitely we all have to work you know we might work 8 to 10 hours every day but it is possible to carve out time to pray do we all carve out time for dinner or to meet a friend or to talk to somebody on the phone we do if we think it's important we do we can definitely make time you know at least an hour a day or more to pray um so it's not one or the other work is important prayer is also important now people also have this excuse they say i don't have enough time to pray what do you think about that i don't have enough time to pray anybody have experience that being too busy i don't have time to pray especially when you're doing ministry is so busy i don't have time to pray i think it's a mindset it's not true if we want to make time for something we will make it okay so uh it's never true that we don't have time to pray if we feel that our life and our work is so tiring maybe the first thing we can do is get up and pray right finish it then go on to the other things so uh, it's not true when we say that you know i don't have time to pray now think about daniel again we said that he had uh, a regimented like a controlled or a or a habitual way of engaging in this discipline of prayer was his life victorious it was very victorious right uh, did he receive revelation from god yes even matters which were not told to him through prayer you know he began to receive revelation so much of revelation as you read the book of daniel i'm just giving you a few things that happened in daniel's life so in the life of every prayerful person you can see god's grace okay and more than that we are able to build our relationship with god as we have talked of so it's important for us to have a strong prayer life jesus had a strong prayer life we have seen that right in his model in his lifestyle we've seen that he woke up early morning for prayer there are many scriptures uh, can somebody quickly read one verse mark 1 verse 35 please anyone who has the mic mark 1 and verse 35 okay so nina adds here she says a disciple needs to be disciplined okay so that makes complete sense now in the morning having risen a long while before daylight he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed yes so it was important for jesus so he woke up early in the morning when you know there was quietness he went to a solitary place solitary places where you don't have any disturbance so he went to a quiet place and there he prayed because he knew that his relationship with the father is very very important okay let's read on luke chapter 5 verses 15 and 16 another person could please read these verses Luke chapter 5 verse 15 to 16 but the news about Jesus spread all the more widely and crowds of people came to hear him and be healed from their diseases and he would go away to lonely places where he prayed okay so quite self explanatory even after a tiring day of ministry he ministered to the people he was healing them he was uh, you know meeting their needs but after that what did he do he went away to a lonely place or a quiet place and there he prayed so jesus made time 
even during the day it was not just early in the morning but also during the day he would make special time for prayer okay so that is the example of jesus we find that in other places as well okay let's also read luke 6 and verse 12 please luke 6 and verse 12 Okay, so he continued a long night in prayer to God, it says. Okay, he went to the mountain to pray and he continued a long night in prayer to God. So this is the prayer habit of Jesus. So he prayed early mornings. Yes, definitely. In addition to that, he made extra time to pray whenever possible. There was also... There were also times when the entire night he decided to pray. Okay, So what could we see in and through the life of Jesus? His strong communion with the Father. He said things like, I only do what I see the Father do. So that tells us that he is so much in line with the Father's will. So if you and I spend a lot of time in prayer, we can understand the will of the Father. We can walk in the ways of the Father. What else do we see in the life of Jesus? Very powerful, very powerful ministry. There are times when he goes to minister one word, you know, be healed, be made whole, your faith has made you whole, uh, or just Lazarus come out. And it happens. And sometimes we wonder, Jesus, why didn't you take two days fasting or something before you minister? Not that it's wrong to do it. Definitely we can take, you know, time, special time to pray before our ministry. But in his routine life, Jesus set aside time to pray. So where did the power come from? It came from that as well. Right? Yeah, Nina, you have something to say? Yeah, so power comes uh, through our relationship with the Father. So this is what we observe in the life of Jesus. And I already told us, if there was one person who could be excused from a disciplined life, it would be Jesus. Because, you know, your Father owns the heavens and the earth. So Jesus, you can do whatever you want to do. But how is the life of Jesus? Very disciplined, very prayerful, very submitted, very committed, very humble. So when the Son of God did not make any excuse, he could have said, right, I am the Son of God, miracles will happen, finished. Or I am the Son of God, everybody listen to me. He never did that. He walked in submission to the Father and particularly through the discipline of prayer. Yes, Vimal. Yeah. Okay, very nice. So Vimal is using the analogy when Jesus said, you know, um, uh, to the Pharisees when they questioned about the money, right, the taxes to be given to Caesar, uh, Jesus said, you must give God what belongs to him and you must give Caesar what belongs to um, Caesar. So our time belongs to God. So a part of that, we must give it to God. So that's another way of looking at it. Okay. Uh, yes. So nothing wrong with that. We must give our time to God. So now that we've understood that we see a scheduled prayer time in the life of Jesus. Um, and it is very important for us who want to live according to God's purpose to have a disciplined lifestyle. Uh, and when we say disciplined, it includes spiritual disciplines such as prayer, 
how do we develop this prayer life? Okay, very practical things um, uh, I will share with us. One is maintain a set time and place to pray on normal days. So if you don't have a place, then think of a place that you would prefer. Okay, so when you get up in the morning, uh, I'm just using morning as an example, but maybe some of you want to pray in the night. That's also okay. When you wake up, you can have something like a simple routine. Like you just go to a place where you're most comfortable, sit and pray. Because most of the time what happens if you think, okay, I'll just lie down and pray or you know, I will lean and pray, you'll be seeing dreams and visions. Okay, So it just doesn't happen. It's best to get up. And uh, maybe, like for me, generally what I do is maybe I get some hot water or something, I drink it, then my sleep is gone. It's a lot easier for me. You know? And there's a place where I sit, and that's most comfortable. And then I can pray, I can focus, I can concentrate. So you can pick a place to pray on normal days. That would help. Uh, you could also pick a set time. Why? pick a set time because as I told us when something is important for us we can you know we can make sure that we do it in our timetable okay so uh, all of you can think about the best part of your day that you can set aside for prayer and every day pray at the same time okay so every day pray at the same time so for me it's the same time every day it's the same time uh, that you know, I I try to do, and it's not like you know I've always been doing like that. I've also learned uh, over the years that I must discipline myself. It was not like that. I would just pray whenever I like it, whenever I like. But slowly, I started practicing it. Okay, and um, like I have an alarm on my phone. It rings every day same time. So then I wake up at the same time, and then I'm able to focus. So this is on normal days. But what happens is sometimes. Maybe we are traveling, right? At that time, we could be traveling. Uh, so there are times, or somebody is in the hospital, we are taking care of them. So when things happen differently, it's OK. You can alter it. It's not very rigid. But normally, it is good to have the same time Okay, when we pray. OK, let's move on. We can have a format. We've already discussed you know, things like the Lord's Prayer, that pattern. So use a pattern. It will help you okay, uh, spend time in prayer. So Yongi Cho, I told you about um, uh, the pattern of prayer, the tabernacle pattern which he used. So he shares that when he first started his ministry, you know, he, he would spend, uh, even back then, he would spend a couple of hours in prayer. okay, And uh, as his ministry went on, it seems he started spending more and more time in prayer. Uh, at one point, he used to spend four hours in prayer before answering any of the emails also. So he used to spend like four hours in prayer. What would he do? He would use a pattern where he would pray about, you know, as I said, tabernacle prayer, like he would pray for the forgiveness of sins, confess sins, you know, Lord, cleanse me. So from that point, you know, he will move on to praying for needs. He will move as if he's uh, moving into the tabernacle, towards the inner part of the tabernacle, he'll pray for God's Holy Spirit to be poured out, the presence of God, greater revelation. So spending four hours minimum, daily, daily, okay, before doing any work of the ministry. But what had happened? It had become a discipline. It becomes a part of your life. So that is why, if you notice the title of this chapter, developing a personal prayer life. Maybe we don't have it, but if we make up our minds, we can do it. Okay, We have to grow in it. We have to discipline ourselves. So have a format. So we've seen that uh, we must praise God. We must thank God when we pray. So you know, Psalm 100 says, come into his um, gates with thanksgiving. Right, uh, his quotes with praise. So maybe I can take uh, initial amount of time thanking the Lord. I can spend some time searching and confessing. You know, things are not right. 
in my relationship with God, I can pray and say, God, forgive me, like how David did, isn't it? David went before the Lord and he confessed his sin. He said, Lord, search me. See if there's any wicked way in me. Okay, lead me in uh, the path ev everlasting. So uh, Psalm 19 verses 12 and 13 also say, God, if there are presumptuous sins, meaning there are things I'm doing which I am not aware are wrong, please help me. No, forgive me and help me to overcome even those things. So based on, there are some scriptures given in our notes. You could follow along. And based on these scriptures, every day we can confess before the Lord. We can check our motives. Um, and also we can hear from God. And when we spend time like this, what happens? You know, we are in a sense forced to make our relationship right with God every day. Isn't it? Yes or no? Because I cannot go further in prayer unless I have dealt with all these issues. So it cleanses me on a daily basis. So I can spend some time confessing my sins. I can also check my earthly relationships. Because what does the Bible say? You know, there are a couple of passages which are given here which um, deal with forgiveness, releasing forgiveness to people. Like if you think that there is a sin, okay, or you're holding something against your brother, you leave your gift there, go reconcile, you know, and come back. That's what the Bible says. Or forgive your brother. So uh, if there are relationships which are suffering, then we can deal with it. Okay, We can forgive people in our hearts. Scriptures also say in 1 Peter 3, 7, you know, if uh, husbands, if they don't have a, a forgiving relationship with their wives, then the their prayers will be hindered, that the prayers also will not be heard. So these are all matters that one can deal with in prayer um, and, you know, set earthly relationships, check earthly relationships. Uh, we can ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, a fresh anointing. Uh, we can continue with praise and thanksgiving every now and then. Okay, We've already discussed that. Praise and thanksgiving is very much a part of our prayer life. So a prayer pattern. So you can do that. You can spend some time waiting on the Lord. What is waiting on the Lord? What is waiting on the Lord? We looked at that kind of prayer. It's a type of prayer. What does it mean? How, how do you pray that? Correct. So we are in the presence of God. We are waiting to listen from Him. We also said that they that wait upon the Lord, we will receive God's strength. So sometimes you're just being still in God's presence. That's also part of our prayer. Then, moving on, we can pray for our family members. Maybe you want to, if people are married, you can pray for your spouse. You can pray for children. Uh, can pray for our local church, specific individuals. Generally, you have somebody who says, please pray for me, brother. Remember me in your prayers. Maybe they are not well or they have some special um, exam, something going on. So you can pray specifically for the people who um, you know you are um, ministering to. We can pray for our own spiritual, personal needs. Uh, we can also spend some time in spiritual warfare. So these are all, I'm just giving you a few things you can include in your prayer time, but it's really up to you, you know, what you want to pray for. But just a uh, 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 basic pattern which you and I can use. So if we use this pattern, how long do you think we can pray? Long period. How long? Five minutes? Yeah, it's possible. Actually, it's possible. You just write down and one one point under that. Say, Heavenly Father, this, 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 this. Finished. Five minutes. Okay. So, frankly, you can spend any amount of time which you want to spend uh, in a genuine way. But it's good to keep increasing the amount of time that you can spend in prayer. So uh, 
on a normal day it's just a suggestion okay i'm not saying hard and fast but at least an hour at least one hour if you can spend in the presence of god that is a good start that's a very good start from there you know you can go on 2 hours 3 hours 4 hour up to you i know people who who have spent um, like you know 10 hours in their in some season of their lives obviously every season of our lives we can't you know spend 10 hours 12 hours we have work also to do but at least 1 to 2 hours every day very much possible if we put our mobile phones away okay so we can get that kind of time to spend in prayer so this pattern it's not that you should fill in one hour in prayer that's not the point but you cover everything okay in your um, time with the lord what are some of the other um, things that we know i said have a time <laughs> have a schedule but we can also pray without schedule for example let's say um, you know i uh, drive i finish my prayer time and i'm driving to come to bible college i just make it my prayer time i can still pray okay maybe i come here and i have a half an hour break for something for some reason i had to meet somebody and they didn't come i can make that my prayer time so in addition to our schedule time we can always pray spontaneously because what does the bible say in first thessalonians 5 uh, verses 16 to 18 we read pray without ceasing okay so don't stop don't stop pray continuously so we can do that we can also pray without ceasing so what is one of the ways in which we can pray continuously spirit yeah you can pray in tongues also like continuously you can keep praying because you don't even have to pray loudly and nobody will even know about it okay so that's another way in which we can pray without ceasing we can have special days um uh, like you can set aside some days and say this is my prayer day okay you just lock yourself up in the room or pray or you go somewhere where there's no disturbance take time in prayer so there can be prayer days there can be prayer seasons uh, what will happen if we make prayer so important in our lives there are a couple of things mentioned in in our notes uh, it will help us build our relationship with god so intimacy with god will be strengthened we will be able to overcome temptation remember jesus uh, when he was in gethsemane what did he tell the disciples to do pray right pray when he comes back what what are they doing they're sleeping and he says could you not pray even for one hour so for and he makes a statement that we will overcome temptation you know if we pray so if i want to overcome temptation i must spend time in prayer when we pray our will will be aligned to the will of god uh, we will be renewed spiritually and strengthened we will also have greater sensitivity to what god is saying okay uh, we have discussed all these points so that is why i'm not going into the details of it but i'm just you know reading it out here from our notes um it will open door for the holy spirit to work in my life and also de-stress me so this is what you know prayer can do and therefore we must ensure that we have uh, scheduled times of prayer personal time as well as corporate times corporate times means prayer with groups so it can be your classmates it can be your church family it can be your life group so um this is how we must plan it up so what we'll do right now is we'll go in for a break okay or if you have any questions we can answer it right here i think that's better so any questions about a pers developing your personal prayer life with prayer time or any difficulties what are the challenges you have
Yes. Okay, going to bed very late. So then waking up early is very difficult. Yeah, that's. Okay, so because of the schedule, very busy schedule, then you can't maintain, is it? The time for prayer? Or the kind of schedule we keep, not because we are busy, but just because we are you know, doing stuff which we shouldn't be doing. <laughs> is that why? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> one thought, uh, why why is it that we're not able to make time for prayer? Because of the busy schedule. So maybe the college schedule in our case, right? It is too tight and then we're not able to make time for prayer. So how do we solve this problem? Ma'am, um, <laughs> uh, ma actually I want to share a thought that um, I saw on a YouTube video once about a man, he's a businessman, he gave a TED talk saying about time, how to manage your time. He says it's not about, uh, you know, um, not having time, it's that you don't give importance to that thing. If you feel it's less important, you obviously won't give time to that. But when you feel it's important, you'll give time. Like for example, when going on vacation, you'll get up early in the morning, you'll get ready for the flight. Even if it's, uh, even if it's three hours early, you have to be there, you'll be five hours early. That's the kind of importance you give. Okay, thank you. So that clarifies many things. So what Sean is saying is he's saying it's not about a busy schedule. It's about prioritizing. So when we think something is important, we will make time for it. So yeah, it is going to be a struggle, but we have to carve out time, the best time, and spend it in prayer. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we will touch upon the next chapter. So everyone's already standing up, so they're so eager to go for a tea break. So yeah, see you all also Google Classroom in about 10 minutes. We'll start at 10.02. Thank you.